Welcome back to Photoshop Tutorials. Today we're going to look at masking once again, but specifically about masking using a blue screen. This of course is something that would be a special effects type of technique, as blue screens were used a lot back when uh, optical compositing was big. And uh, now that we do all our compositing digitally, Blue screens are still used. Now in lieu of a blue screen, I actually have a nice bright photo of a blue sky. So a plain blue sky can really function as a, a blue screen. It can work just as well. In this case, that's what we have right here. And blue screens are still used, uh, especially if there's going to be green in the screen that would interfere with a green screen. And we'll do green screen masking a little bit later on. But as I've talked about um, working um, and making a mask procedurally, we're going to look in the channels. So you have our channels, and of course you have red, green, blue. So we have our red, and our green, and our blue. These of course are the grayscale channels, each one representing the color information. And we're looking here, as mentioned previously, to find the most contrast between what we want to keep and what we want to get rid of to make our mask, to see how much of it Photoshop can do for us. So. Sometimes it's not that obvious which channel you use, or maybe the channel isn't kind of, uh, isn't all there, it's incomplete. In this case, I can see a bit of contrast here and here, so I'll duplicate that blue channel. Now if we do our usual levels command on it, command uh, L or control L right here, and we've got our white eyedropper and click in the sky and the black eyedropper, and click in our darker parts and keep working up and up and up and bring this a little closer together here. What we see is that the edges are pretty good, but we're missing something. We're missing the highlights. As we mask out and get this white in the sky, we lose all this highlight information because it's uh, contained in about the same area as the rest of the blue right in there. So this really isn't going to work for us, at least not completely here to make our mask. So I'll cancel this and delete this uh, extra alpha channel here. I'll delete that. Looking back here, obviously we need the blue channel, but we want to see, is there some other channel that would contain this highlight information? Look at the green channel. Well, I'm not sure there. If we look at the red channel, well that's interesting. Notice how the sky goes dark and this highlight information really stands out here. So if I were to duplicate the red channel and do a levels command on it, we'll start with black, there we go, and then get some white going here. Notice how this is just the opposite of our other channel, our blue channel duplicate. Instead of the sky being white, the sky is now black, and we're picking up this information here. So this is the missing information. The missing highlight information is it's the opposite of what we need, but it's right here in the red channel. So we'll cancel this and we'll get rid of that, that uh, extra channel. What this means is that to make a mask for this image, or really any true blue screen image, we need a combination of channels. We need the blue and the red. They're going to work together to make the final channel. So how do we do that? Remember also the red had the opposite information of what we needed. We need to find a way to combine these two channels. Well, Photoshop has a way to do that. It's um, really pretty easy and automated. And in fact, it's been in Photoshop for a long, long, long time. Longer than anyone here can remember, I'm sure. And it's up here in image. It's called calculations. It may be that you've never heard of this, but this is exactly what you want to do blue screen and even green screen removal. So we'll go to image and calculations and what you'll see is this. Calculations is really designed to take one channel, combine it with another channel, and then spit you out a new result right here. So we've got the red and the red and it says multiply. That's the default how it always starts out. So if we recall the information that we saw from our channels, we need the red, and we need to combine it with the blue. And we see here with the preview, we see the result right there. Now, if you recall, the red channel had just the opposite information. So each one of these has an invert option. We'll invert the red. 
Now, right there, that's looking pretty good. And it took zero effort. It's, we've got a bright sky. We've got a dark foreground. And the shadows are kind of combining with the highlights, but still I see too much going on there. And that's multiply. We need to remember how the, uh, the blending modes work. That with certain colors in Photoshop, like white, black, and 50% gray, those have special properties. And blending modes work with those. The darkening blending modes, like multiply, will darken things and white is transparent. So all the white that's in the original red channel gets knocked out and we just get the darker parts. It's not quite enough here, but I happen to know that if you look at the darkening blending channels, and really handy, they're all organized together, I happen to know there's one that's a really super powerful one, like multiply on steroids. And that is color burn. So let's try color burn, which would be similar. Of course, anything here, white's going to be transparent with these blending modes. And color burn is just a really powerful one. Let's try that. And look what we get. Complete black right in there. Really nice. Amazing how it did that. Again, the red channel inverted combined with the blue channel by color burn. And the result is a new channel. Click OK. And there it is, spits out a new channel for us. It's called Alpha 1 because this is an alpha channel. Any channel in addition to the color channels is an alpha channel. And of course, alpha means transparency in computer graphics. So uh, let's do a little bit of adjustment because this is not pure white. So we'll do Command L or Control L to get our levels, get the white eyedropper, start here in the sky. And as I click in white here, it's white here, I can see it gets a little darker there by the edge. That's really common in photographs. The edges, because of vignetting and lenses, might get a bit darker. So I'll just keep going up here to make all these bits here uh, white. I'll double check with the black eyedropper, but you can see that it's already solidly black right in there. No problem. So we'll say OK. So there's a mask, a beautiful mask. Let's zoom in here. And we've got really nice anti-aliased edges, white here and black here. And it, it took zero effort. So we'll load a selection, again, command click on the uh, thumbnail here, or control click on the PC, click, load a selection. You can also load a selection by clicking on this button right here, which is designed just for that. Click RGB to load all the color channels, uh, go back to your layers, and click the mask button. And once again, we've neglected to invert it, so we have just the opposite of what we, what we want. But again, not a problem. Remember that in the properties for the mask, the invert button is right there. Of course, you can just do Command I or Control I, and you get just that right there. And look how simple that is. Now I'm going to zoom in here and take a look and see see how it goes. And that's not bad, but I'm seeing a little bit of a blue halo, a little bit of fringe right there on the edge uh, of my foreground image. So let's take a look at the mask. You can actually do a color correction or an adjustment right there on the mask more of a value correction since there's no color information in, in a, a layer mask. So I would do a Command L or Control L to do levels right there on the mask. And this shows me, if you look at the histogram, there's that spike of black, and that's all this area out here. There's this spike of white, and that's all the area right in here, looking at a little thumbnail. And we have the grays. Now you always want to have some grays for anti-aliasing. But as I zoom in, I can see the edge looks a little bit soft, and there's a little bit too much blue right there. And for something like this, where we have a nice, sharp, um, very consistent edge, there's no feathering or soft or trans translucent stuff, we want to probably have a bit more black and a bit uh, fewer grays in between the pure black and white. So just take this black slider and pull it in. Again, we're doing a levels adjustment right on the mask, and we're seeing the effect right here interactively as we do this. Now to go back and forth, just look at the preview button, uncheck that, and you can see the difference there. There's that little bit soft, softer um, edge. Click on it. We're sharpening that up a little bit and we're getting rid of we're getting rid of that little bit of blue right there. Now of course you, there are other ways you can get rid of blue that's along the edge. You can apply a little bit of of uh, 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 an inner glow to this on that layer and kind of bring the color out that way. But we'll do it right here just to have a nice, accurate, crisp mask. And we'll say OK. If you option click on the mask, you can actually look at it and you can see exactly what's happening there. 
want those nice crisp edges. We still need some anti-aliasing, some grays, so that it looks like a nice smooth edge. But because the edge is so sharp, we don't need that much. So there is the mask. We'll zoom back out. And look at that background removal. Really nice, really clean, and very simple. Remember, this is working to make a mask procedurally. Use the channels, as we've talked about before. However, this time, instead of doing everything manually, remember that Photoshop has the tools for you. And they've been there a long time. This is their exact purpose. Image and calculations. That's really what it's all about. I hope you enjoyed it and that you learned something from this. And hope to have you back again for more tutorials in the future.